Welcome to our sanctuary at Deer Park Baptist Church. Each midweek we take a few moments together and consider some announcements in the life of the church, some prayer time, and some scripture that allows us moments of reflection upon God's word. So we'll do all of that today, but welcome to this moment of being together. We can't be together physically, can we? However, the deacons were able to meet this week. They've been wanting to meet as they often have done every, well, they've always met every month, uh, the beginning of the month, and they met in the morning for a couple of hours, and they social distanced and used their masks and were able to accomplish some work that they wanted to get done. You'll see their picture in the newsletter showing you that they're in the fellowship hall together. In that same room, we have now begun our Bible studies that start on 10 o'clock on Sunday morning and another one at 1 p.m. Sunday afternoon. There's a third one that meets on Wednesdays at 1 o'clock in Fellowship Hall as well. The first sessions we had, Jerry Houston taught in the morning and I taught at the afternoon, one on Sunday. We had a pretty full crowd. We're allowed uh, by our standards to have as many as 10 people and that's about what we had. There's room for one or two more, so if you're interested in being a part of this, please do so. Carol will be meeting this afternoon, and we've been praying for her and for the others as they gather together to study the book of Luke, the parables of Jesus. Also reminding you that in the newsletter, there's always a prayer list. It's as up to date as we know how to make it. Most weeks, there's some new names that were not there the week before, and other weeks, of course, many names are repeated because they really need for us to continue to intercede for their needs. Finally, the deacon on call this week is Pat Pfeiffer. She's ready to meet you or help you in any way she possibly can. Please feel free to call her. Let me share with you just a couple of quotes and scripture verses for your reflection. They speak deeply to my own heart. One is from Psalm 139, verses 25, uh, 23 and 24. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there's any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. And then a couple of quotes from persons whose lives made all the difference in the world. One was from a teenager, Anne Frank, who helped to protect Jewish people in the time of World War II in the city of Amsterdam. This is what Anne wrote as a 14-year-old. No one has become poor by giving. Isn't that a beautiful thought? And also a Quaker saying, these are the friends we call friends or Quakers. They say this to one another, it's so important. An enemy is one whose story we have not yet heard. We need to hear each other's stories is what they're saying. And it will make all the difference of becoming a friend. Finally, in the book of James, chapter 4, verse 8, the scripture says, Come near to God, and God will come near to you. The scripture passage we'd like to consider today for our devotion is found in the book of Philippians. It's chapter 3, beginning at verse 4. Paul is writing to a church, but he begins to talk about his own life in Christ and how he's going to grow beyond where he is in the moment. Beginning at verse 4, he says, If anyone has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. Yet whatever gains I had, these have come to regard, and my part, as loss. Because more than that, I regard everything as loss, because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish, in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes under the law, but one that comes through faith in Jesus Christ, the righteousness from God that is based on faith. I want to know Christ, and the power of his resurrection, and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death, if somehow I may attain 
the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it on my own, but this one thing I do, straining forward, forgetting what's behind, I look what's ahead. I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. I have not yet reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. With these words, Paul captures our never-ending longing for a deeper life with God. It's what Evelyn Underhill once called reaching for what we do not have by the faithful practice of what we do have. It's what Paul tells his friends in Philippi is pressing on toward the prize. We don't press on toward the goal of a deeper life with God because we're hoping to gain a reward or avoid a punishment or because we're trying to work our way into heaven or out of hell. Rather, we keep pressing on to a deeper life with God because we don't want to underlive the one and only life we are ever going to have. Someday is going to be the last day for all of us. And as far as we know, we are not going to get to come back around and do this over and get it right the next time. Which is why we want to live whatever is left of our lives as deeply, fully, faithfully as possible. So this is why we who love and follow Jesus keep pressing on to the goal of a more thoughtful, gentle, prayerful kind of life, of kindness and courage. And what is this life, really? Well, it's a spirit-filled, cross-formed life which is simultaneously vertical with love for God and horizontal with love for others. It's the kind of life which is guided by a clear moral compass of integrity. And it is stretched by a wide wingspan of welcome, a life which we, like Paul, may not yet have, but towards which, like Paul, we keep pressing on. So what are we actually doing in and with this one life? We keep reaching and stretching for a deeper life with God that we do not yet have. And how do we do it? by faithful practice of the passionate longing for which we have in God. We have but faith we cannot know, for knowledge is of things we see, and yet we trust it comes from thee. A beam in darkness, let it grow. Those are the words of the poet, Alfred Lord Tennyson. They can be our own prayer and our own thoughts as well, as we pray with Paul about a life of growth in Jesus Christ. Thank you.